Information shared on the following program is for general information purposes only. It does not constitute legal, tax, investment, or other advice, nor is it intended to recommend any particular investments, products, or financial instruments. Always seek advice from your financial advisor, attorney, or accountant with regard to investment, legal, or tax questions. Welcome to the only show in the country dedicated to helping savers worry less about money, The Worry-Free Retirement, with your host, best-selling author and fiduciary, Tony Walker. Hello, folks, and welcome to The Worry-Free Retirement. And, and yes, I am that little man in the sweater vest, fiduciary and retirement planning specialist, Tony Walker. And today, just in case you missed it, we're going to cover three more very, very popular Tony in the Trenches questions. But before we jump right in, let me introduce the crew that's in our Louisville studios on this beautiful, uh, what is it, Wednesday morning, April 21st, 2021. We have, first of all, sitting to my left, my favorite son-in-law with us again, Trey Jurgens. How are you doing yeah. this morning, Trey? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Hey, how, how are you liking our new format? And we're I not going to do this every week. Don't get, yeah. don't get the wrong idea. I'm not going to have you in here every <laughs> week, but you're doing a great job. Yeah, I heard you were getting lonely up here, so I'm glad I was able to <laughs> assist. Well, someone that never keeps me lonely has been with me how many years now, Mr. Aaron? Uh, I've been with you eight years, sir. Been eight, with you eight years. So. Eight years. So yeah. Aaron Orander, America's favorite financial sidekick. Did you see the people that came in the office and saw you walk by? They go, hey, isn't that that sidekick <laughs> That's guy? That's that famous guy from that show. Did that make you mad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. And then finally, we have Mr. Derek Hudson, kind of behind the scenes over there. Derek, you doing well? Yeah, you guys keep my cage out of the camera view. So oh, okay, awesome. we will. Yeah, you stay in your little cage. You just stay behind the graphics there. Oh, by the way, how's it coming with our video we did of the office episode we're working on? That thing's going to oh, be killer. It's, it's bizarre, but it's coming along <laughs> pretty well. <laughs> right man to work on it, the bizarre man himself. Thank you, Derek. All right, folks, we had a great time last week. In fact, Aaron, why don't you tell folks off camera there how quick how they could go back and watch past episodes of the Worry-Free Retirement and the prior episodes to that on our YouTube channel. Absolutely. So folks, if you want to watch the past television shows, all you got to do is go to youtube.com and right there in the top search bar, just type in Tony Walker Financial. Click that search button and you'll see Tony's smiling face right there. There it is. All you got to do is just click on that and you're going to find all types of video content. You're going to find past shows. You're going to find past webinars we've done, interviews we've done. You're going to find all types of stuff to keep you busy. And uh, thank you, Aaron. You do a good job with that tray, keeping it organized. Remember we had somebody that kind of came in as a consultant and they said, well, you sure don't have uh, enough content. They were kidding around. I mean, yeah. we've got so much content for people. So it's a wonderful resource for folks. Okay. Trey set the stage. We did three Tony in the Trenches last week. We've met again. We've got three more today. We've tried to pick the most common. Remind folks what we're doing today in case, in case they missed uh, last week's episode. Yeah, so I've got in my hot little hand here some questions. These are real questions, whether they're emails that come in to any of our staff, fiduciaries, uh, phone calls, just stuff we keep seeing on and on. So we've kind of consolidated the top 10 or so, and we're just kind of knocking them out. So we'll jump right back in. This next one, this is funny because we hear it quite often. Who is Charles Schwab? Is that that mailbox money you're talking about? Do you charge a fee on whatever we would invest in Charles Schwab? And if so, how is that calculated? Okay. And before I answer that question, I kid you not, I was reading this at the break. Uh, folks, a lot of times as an advisor, we're in these databases and we get solicited probably more than you do, but we get solicited from other advisory firms trying to recruit us to their companies. Okay. So this one came in. I won't name the name, won't even name the company, but I love this part. He's saying that we should you know, consider doing business with them. He probably doesn't know we do business with Schwab, but I love this part. He said, we're unique advisor centric. Okay. Unlike some custodians. So a custodian would be like Schwab or Merrill Lynch or Fidelity, whoever he's talking about. But he says, I think I know he's talking about unlike some custodians, we are exclusively in the business of supporting advisors. So if you're a consumer, that doesn't sound good. And then he goes on to say in his recruitment model, we provide every RIA that means registered investment advisor, which we are with a dedicated service pod, whatever that is, and we don't run commercials telling your clients they pay too much in fees. I mean, this is hilarious. Yeah. 
It's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I guess this firm knows they charge a lot in fees. They're not going to tell clients they're charging a lot of fees. But by the way, you're probably working with a firm that tells clients they may be charging too much in fees. I have no problem with this, folks. This is why we love Charles Schwab. Charles Schwab, first of all, is one of the largest custodians that provides investments so independent advisors like us can use those investments. We don't work with Charles Schwab. In fact, if you dropped in the local Charles Schwab retail office and said, hey, we're here to see Tony Walker, they probably don't even know who we are. So Schwab just provides us the products, the ETFs, the stocks, bonds, mutual funds. And the reason we like them, number one, they're easy to work with, but their fees are very, very low. So let's kind of dive in here and look a minute, Derek, in terms of what we're talking about and how we use Charles Schwab with what we call our worry-free split IRA concept. So folks, we have to get a fee for anything we're doing with Schwab. I'm going to take you to the whiteboard in a second. So if we're having to charge a fee, we want to use a custodian like Schwab that is very low fee. Hope that makes sense. We're trying to do you a favor here. We're not trying to lop on fee after fee. We're trying to cut out that middleman or find a middleman that does not charge a lot in fees because we still have to get paid. So anything that goes in that bucket, I'll show you this in a second, will get a fee. We charge eight tenths of 1%. If you have more than that, it gets a little lower, but basically eight tenths of 1% a year. And I'll show you that in a second. If we use annuities, the annuities can charge fees, but those don't go to us. We only work on a commission basis with the annuities. So this is why this works so well. And you might say, well, how am I supposed to work these together? And when do I take out money out of which buckets? Well, let's walk over to the whiteboard right now, Aaron, if you can mosey over here with me. And we'll use an example of how we might handle someone's 401k plan, okay? <clears throat> and it can be with any amount of money. We don't have minimum amounts of money. If you had a $50,000 401k plan, we could help you do this to some degree, okay? It just depends on the amount of money you have to work with. But in this example, we're going to take that $500,000, all right? And we're going to split it up into three buckets, all right? We've been doing these for years. We know what we're doing with these. So let's just imagine for the heck of it, Again, don't hold me to this, but we put $200,000 in the Schwab bucket. We put $200,000 in an annuity that has an income rider, and the balance, $100,000 in an annuity that does not have an income rider. So how are all these fees going to work? Who's going to make money on your money, right? You need to know this. Well, obviously, with Schwab, that works out to be $1,600 per year, or that would be, uh, what would be the math on that tray, $350 a quarter. Is that correct? Yeah. So we would charge to manage everything. I mean, we do everything. We pick all the stocks, bonds, mutual funds. We do all the distributions. We set up the accounts. You just get back in the back of the plane and write, we'll fly this thing home, folks. You don't have to do anything. We would charge about $350 per quarter to do all of that. That's it. All right. A uh, gentleman yesterday, Trey, brought up, uh, there, he's going to move some money over. He said, how much do you all charge if you send me money? And Shannon's like in the office, no, we don't charge anything. So there's not a lot of hidden fees on that. Okay, what about the annuity? Now, why would that have a 1%? Well, this is what we call an income rider. This is where we're going to get our future mailbox money from. Remember, mailbox money does not come from Schwab. Mailbox money is defined as that money that's guaranteed to last as long as you do. And the only thing that's going to do that is an annuity, folks. Contrary to what the people on TV and radio and the internet are saying, if you want guaranteed income for life, you've got to put in some portion of money into an annuity. They'll pay us a commission on that. We don't charge any more fees. In this case, the insurance company, not us, if you have that rider, is going to charge about $2,000 a year because of the additional risk they're taking to provide for your longevity in your lifetime. Okay, but we don't get that. This is what's called an accumulation annuity. It has no riders, so therefore, there are no fees or costs. So you might be looking at that saying, Tony, well, which buckets do I get into? Do I put more here or there? Well, that's why you need a trained retirement specialist, folks. This is what we do day in and day out. We sit down with clients. We look at your IRA, your 401k, your lump sum pension. Maybe you got a ton of money over there languishing in the bank that you need some help with. And we will design a portfolio of products suited to meet your needs. So if you don't have anything like this or don't have an advisor in whom you feel is truly working in your best interest, disclosing the fees, how they work, how you can use and enjoy this money before it's too late, let me invite you to log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com, TonyWalkerFinancial.com, or call the toll-free number on your screen. All right, we got another Tony in the Trenches coming up for you. You stay tuned. This is a good one.
Trey, you getting ready over there? Uh, okay, gotcha. we'll see you in just a second, folks. Wondering how much money you'll need to retire? Probably a lot less than you think. I'm retirement specialist Tony Walker, and for the past 36 years, I've helped thousands of savers determine when to retire and how much money they'll need in retirement, and I can help you too. To meet in person at no cost or obligation, let me invite you to log on right now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com or call the toll-free number on your screen. We look forward to talking with you soon. Welcome, folks, to the Worry-Free Retirement, and welcome back to the... Uh, what are you doing, Derek? Uh, your math is a little off there, boss. That's, uh, oh, that's rather embarrassing. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not the money manager. I'm paying here. you to be a graphics man, not a mathematician. Well, Get you know, back I over can there. do two jobs. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. All right, we're dealing with Tony in the trenches here, and we're back to the studio with question number two. And boy, is this a doozy. Trey, let her rip. Yeah. This one's good. This one actually made me crack up. It, email started, Tony, I'm burned out. My body's ready for retirement. I'm just not sure about my finances. No one can tell me for certain if I can actually pull it off. What's the best way to find out whether or not I have enough to retire and, big one, not run out of money? Not run out of money. So the folks, you got to remember, all we're doing, you know, retirement has become so complicated and because so many people are looking to retire, you know, as we always say, there's 10,000 people turning 65 every day, everybody and his brother now is wanting to handle your money. And why not? We've just learned there's a lot of money to be made in handling your money. So before you just rush out and turn over your life savings to someone, you need to think through why are you wanting to retire? What are you going to do in retirement? And what is it going to cost to manage your finances? So remember, it's all about cash flow. Think of your house. You know, money comes in the front door. That's the money that needs to be generated for income. And then it's going to go out the back door. That's the money you're going to spend and enjoy. But you have to start with some sort of tool to know how much money for sure is going out the back door. And that's what we call the spending plan. Uh, we'll tell you how to get this in a second. But the purpose of a spending plan, first of all, I love the name of it. I came up with that. We're here to spend money. Folks, when you're getting into retirement, you've been saving for retirement. The reason you saved for retirement is so you could spend what you saved. I mean, many of you are afraid to spend any money. I don't get it, unless you're afraid of running out of it, which we got that covered. So as you'll notice here, and we can have Aaron, can you tighten up on this and post it? Do you mind, Aaron? Aaron can pull this off. But if you notice here, basically we can help you with this if you don't have something like this already. If you have any wages, rental income, Social Security, dividends, pension, that's gonna be your money coming through the front door. And it'll look a lot different than it did in the past because you won't probably have as many deductions, okay? But then we have to go line item through this. This is a couple pages long. Line item through this so we can see exactly what you're going to be spending. So without a, some sort of tool like this, it would be hard to determine how you're gonna come up with that money. Now, Trey, I know you meet with a lot of people too in our offices, especially those that have kind of become clients. Would you say that most people are surprised at how, I guess not little money, but how much less money they're spending once they get into retirement? Walk through what you see with our clientele as they age through retirement. Yeah, they, they really just start spending less and less money. I know you talk about it on the show. Some folks out there on Wall Street are telling them they're going to need more and more money and save and save, don't use and enjoy that money. But time and time again, people get into well into retirement, realize they're just not spending that much money. I had a young lady, I, she's probably 75 yesterday, and I said, we need to start some of this mailbox money. You got to use it. And she says, honey, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I said, doesn't matter. I mean, let's use it. So she's thinking about maybe doing a little more traveling. She's got some grandkids she wants to give some money to. It's like, come on now. I mean, if you're going to eventually just hold on to it, somebody's going to try to take it away from you. So folks, you got to look. That's the first thing. The second thing you got to do is realize that money is created for what you might need. Now, I came up with this graphic. It's called the four needs of money. We're going to reintroduce from our last segment, Charles Schwab and annuities. But think of money this way. Think of having these little treasure chests full of money. Most people don't do this properly, but you need to do this. Your first treasure trough of money is money that you definitely need now. This is one reason we've put a lot of money on the front end with Charles Schwab. 
because you might need current income, you might have an emergency. I met someone yesterday that's getting ready to buy a new car. Well, where are they going to get that money? That would come out of the Schwab bucket because it's so accessible. The second thing is, is you might need money later. Like the young lady I just mentioned, this would be the annuity that we turn on the mailbox money so that you can guarantee you'll never outlive your money. Oh, incidentally, we covered uh, in our last show a young lady by the name of Hester Ford, who was 116 years of age. Did you realize if Miss Ford had had an annuity with mailbox money attached to it, she would have still been receiving an income guaranteed all the way up to 116? Nobody can guarantee that. That's pretty cool. Then you have money that you might need now. Uh, Derek, I mean, you recently, I know, gave your uh, soldier car, but you had money that you had to come up with for a buddy that took your car off on a ride and had a wreck, right? Mm -hmm. He fortunately had the money to pay you back, though, correct? Yep. Okay. So luckily, he had some money that he might need now. I know, Trey, you had an incident, a pretty scary incident with Lacey. Had a mm -hmm. car wreck out here. When was that again? That was February of last year. Totaled her car. Luckily, Ivy and Scout were fine. Did they pay you top dollar for that car? What did you all have to do? Absolutely not. Totaled the car out, and that car was worth a lot more to us than whatever they gave us and the value that they came up with. So luckily you had money to replace that car because the insurance company sure wasn't going to do it. And then finally, the money that you might need later. This would be things like emergencies you haven't perceived of. We'd have people more and more having to take more care of their children and grandchildren, even situations where grandchildren or children are moving back. Uh, long-term care issues, health care issues. So properly positioned, what we try to do with our clients is make sure the money is spread out and diversified, not necessarily with investments, but positioned so that we can meet the four needs of money. So this is something you're looking at and going, I don't have anything organized like this, Tony, and it seems like everybody just wants my money, and if they get it, I never hear from them. If you're looking for a full-service retirement planning specialist firm that can help you lay out this kind of stuff, why don't you right now log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com, TonyWalkerFinancial.com, or call the toll-free number on your screen. All right, one more biggie, another Tony in the Trenches question coming up. You got one ready to lock and load there, Trey? You know it. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. Hang in there. Who can you trust? It's one of the most important decisions you'll have to make. Question is, are you ready? Well, we're here to help at Tony Walker Financial. You know, we care more about you than we do your money, and we have over 2,000 happy clients and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau to prove it. Rolling over a 401k, confused about Social Security, maybe you're afraid of running out of money. Learn how to use and enjoy and protect your hard-earned money. Log on now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and let's get started. Welcome back to the Worry-Free Retirement. I'm Tony Walker. I hope you're enjoying these Tony in the Trenches. Let's send it over to Trey now. What's our next one, Trey? All right, this next one, we get this quite often because it's an age that we often talk about on the TV show. But Tony, what's the significance of this age 59 and a half? Why is it such a magic number when it comes to my 401k? And why didn't my employer tell me about it? Oh, that's, that's really interesting. So folks, you got to remember a lot of these different ages that come up are imposed on us by government officials who pass things into law. So let's just take a look at really what's going on with the 401k. The 401k was enacted in 1978 to replace those good old guaranteed pensions that provided all that mailbox money that my granddad enjoyed. The 401k now involves you and the employer. And, and we assume the employers put a new match in. So instead of the employers having to fork over tons of money to fund these pension plans, which were very expensive, they kind of got them off the hook and allowed them to offer 401ks. So let's assume that you are putting money into your 401k and your employer is adding a match. And as we record this show on April 21st, 2021, the market's at an all-time high and you're looking at that thing and that bag of money is a lot bigger than it was and you're thinking, wow, what can happen if I'm 60 or 61 since I'm over 59 and a half? Do I have any options available? So first of all, if you're over the age of 59 and a half, what we can do at Tony Walker Financial, it's a free service. We have a specialist on board that will call your custodian. That's the, the folks that handle your money with you on the line to see if we can roll that 401k over to our proprietary split IRA process. That way we can try to manage it much more efficiently and not have it just sitting out there in the stock market with nobody watching it. 
So all you have to do is, is log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com or call the toll-free number. Tell them you want to call your custodian to see if that money can be rolled over, and we'll make that free phone call with you on the line. We'll do all the talking, and of course, you'll give us permission to talk to that custodian. So that's the first issue with age 59 and a half. Again, to summarize that, many of you who are over the age of 59 and a half, you can keep contributing to the 401k, but you can roll the main portion of that 401k over into safer territory. Now to explain the other one, it's a little more complicated. I'm gonna to go to the whiteboard here, Aaron, if you can follow me over. And you say, okay, Tony, that's one issue with this age 59 and a half, but what's the other issue with it? Well, this involves an actual case I was working on recently. A gentleman and his wife came in, and it was actually kind of comical. Really nice fella, okay? He's out here working on the road, traveling all over God's creation, and he is burned out. Trey mentioned that earlier. We get a lot of this, folks. He's just burned out. And he said, Tony, I'm looking forward to age 59 and a half. And I said, well, what's the big deal about 59 and a half? And he goes, well, I'm going to retire. And I said, well, why are you waiting to 59 and a half? And he looked at me like, it was funny, Trey, like, man, you don't know what you're talking about, Tony. <laughs> he said, because that's when I can retire, right? That's when I can get access to my 401k plan. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, now, if you terminate employment, if you go on and retire now at age 57, under the law, you can retire. You can get access to that 401k. And he said, I didn't know. How do you do? Okay, so let's just look at that. So he was incorrect. That's okay. But let's look at the rules governing this 59 and a half. There's two sets of rules, okay? And I, I think the 401k administrators came up with these rules, Trey, because it really <laughs> does favor them. Okay, so let's say you have a 401k of 300,000 currently, and we'll take this gentleman who's 57 years of age and he's ready to call it quits or change jobs or whatever, but he wants access to that money. The problem is if you take money out of a 401k and put it in your pocket prior to 59 and a half, there is a 10%, I call it excise tax, we'll just call it a penalty. So let's say this gentleman does that. He rolls it into an IRA and he takes that $40,000. Well, he's gonna to have to pay taxes on the $40,000, but on top of that, he's going to owe an additional 10% tax penalty. Not real good, right, Trey? Nope. Okay, so that's the one rule. The IRA works the same way. If he rolls it over to us, $300,000. But there's a little catch here. Because he's over the age of 57 when he terminates, there's a certain rule in the tax code that favors the 401k in terms of avoiding the excise tax. So write this one down. It's very important. This might be you. If you terminate employment, at age 55 or later, right, we're, we've got this, I'll just put it this way. We kind of got this window right here, this little window where this 10% penalty falls. So in this gentleman's case, and we talked about this, if he retires now because he's terminating now, if he leaves the money with that 401k custodian prior to 59 and a half, he can get access to that money anytime without penalty. And you say, well, Tony, how does that benefit you? Well, it doesn't, but that's what a fiduciary is supposed to do is work in the best interest of the client and try to give them advice to help save them money. That's what this is all about, folks. This is your money. It's not mine. It's not the 401k. We want to do things that are in your best interest. But you might say, well, Tony, I don't really need the money now or need as much of it, and I want you guys to handle it. Is there any way if I do decide to get some money out, we can avoid that 10% penalty? And yes, the government gives us an out, it's called a 72T election. Now, the way this would work is, depending on your age, we would calculate, based on government tables, the amount of money we can send you, based on the government tables, that would avoid this 10% penalty. So in conclusion, folks, here's what I would say. There's nothing magical about the age of 59 and a half other than you better have an advisor that understands the ramifications of that age, which we do. So if you're sitting there right now, whether you're over the age of 59 and a half or under, but you have a lot of questions about your 401k, IRA, TSP, taxation of this stuff, please contact us. We're experts in this area. We know what we're talking about. We've done it for years and we're here to help. Just log on right now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com, TonyWalkerFinancial.com, or give us a call at the toll-free number on your screen. All right, we've got just a few minutes left, but i got to leave one more Tony in the Trenches, and it deals with what the Bible has to say about money and my philosophy about it as well. Good stuff coming your way. You stay tuned.
Have you recently retired, been laid off, or offered a pension buyout? Has the company you work for moved, been acquired, or closed its doors forever? And finally, do you have a 401k with a previous employer you'd like to move to safer territory? Then take advantage of this opportunity to move your 401k or lump sum pension to Tony Walker Financial. Let's meet in person to discuss your retirement options. Log on now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com to schedule your free, no obligation appointment. Let us help you today. You got that covered? Yep. That yeah. Good deal. Thank you. All right. And welcome back, folks, to the Worry-Free Retirement. I'm Trey Jurgens, a fiduciary here and the favorite son-in-law. And uh, Tony, we've got one last Tony in the Trenches question that actually kind of leads you right back into the Bible segment. This person recently read Live Well, Die Broke. They said they've grown up in church all their life. They feel guilty about spending money and want to know a little bit about how you develop these philosophies about not worrying about the guilt trip gospel, and two, using and enjoying this money. Well, um, since becoming a Christian in 1991, folks, I guess I've studied the Bible in relation to money. I, I can't argue I've more than anybody, I don't know, but my wife will tell you, I love studying the Bible and researching it from the perspective of God and money. And I truly, truly believe that God is not overly concerned as much about this money as we are. The book in the Bible that has influenced me the most is the book of Ecclesiastes. So, Trey, have you read that book at all? Or I'm yeah. sure you've read it. Mm -hmm. but So, written by the world's richest man, at the end of his life, see, I like to talk to people that are older. I used to have a Sunday school class of gentlemen that were 75 to 85 years of age. Many of our clients are older. Yeah. To me, you know, we talked about the, uh, what was her name, Miss, Miss Ford, Hester yep. Ford, 116. Would have loved to have interviewed her. Because to me, the age of someone gives you perspective on things. It's hard to have perspective in your 30s, 40s. Even I'm 61, I'm still gaining perspective. So Solomon, you take the wealthiest man ever to walk the face of the earth, and for somebody to look back over all of life's work, over everything he ever had, and to summarize all this by using the word vanity. You know what that word means? Literally means, folks, meaninglessness. So what he was saying is this money, these possessions, all this hard work, everything you plow into it. Don't get me wrong. I like to work hard and I like money and all that good stuff. But what he's saying is in the end, it means nothing. So to me, that's the whole point. Why wouldn't you take something that means nothing and make something out of it? Why wouldn't you want to enjoy it? Why wouldn't you want to give it to people, give it to charity, see other people use and enjoy it? Because one day, that's what Live Well, Die Broke is all about, folks. One day, you and I will die, and we ain't going to be able to take this stuff with you. So if you're looking at life right now and you're thinking, I want an advisor that thinks like that. I want a game plan to use and enjoy my money before it's too late and also, without the fear of running out of it, let's talk. There's absolutely no cost or obligation to do so. Why don't you take advantage of meeting with us by phone or in person? Just log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com, TonyWalkerFinancial.com, or call the toll-free number on your screen. Well, we hope you've enjoyed today's program. Trey, thank you so very much for being with us. Aaron, Derek, you guys, Derek, you awake over there? Good job, man, at the graphics. So between now and next week, you remember, if all else fails, you be worry-free. Make it a good one.